ultimately for me, it's a very straightforward thing. Aging causes suffering and death. You know, what's part of this do, can, can anyone not understand? Um, it, it's very straightforward that aging is, is not, not, not enjoyable. Um, uh, uh, have you, you can see the, the, the caption down here, fun, not fun. Um, so, um, so then the thing is, um, you know, why do people actually complain about it at all? Um, I call it the pro-aging trance. Um, a sort of hypnosis, a sort of collective hypnosis. People say things like this. They say, you know, wouldn't it be so boring not getting Alzheimer's? Um, you know, <laughs> no. Pe pe you know, wouldn't dictators live forever? You know, dictator comes really low on the league table of risky jobs, doesn't it? Really. So, um, so um, you know, uh, it seems to me that you know, these are problems which. You know, I, I'm not ridiculing them utterly. What I'm ridiculing is the idea that they add up to an argument to engage in any sort of hesitation on the crusade to defeat aging. Ultimately, aging kills 100,000 people every single day worldwide. That's two-thirds of all deaths are from causes that young adults basically never die of. In the developed world, it's something in the region of 90% of all deaths. And, of course, most of those deaths are, deaths are preceded by a great deal of suffering and, um, you know, dependence and debilitation and so on. So, this is something that we have to actually ask ourselves. If you've got an argument that says, well, it will cause problems if we didn't have ageing, then fine. But if you are trying to use that argument to say, therefore, let's not go there, then you'd better be able to argue problems are, are so serious as to outweigh the deaths of all these people, or else, you know, don't waste my time. It comes down to things like this. Some people say, well, you know, I don't want to live to a thousand. Um, you know, I don't want to live to a thousand necessarily. I don't even know whether I want to live to a hundred. But I do know that I want to make that choice when I'm 99, <laughs> rather, than, r r rather than having it gradually removed from me by my declining health. Ultimately, this is what it comes down to. The, Extension of lifespan by the defeat of aging is not the point, at least it's not the main point for me, and I don't think it's the main point for most people who are engaged in this crusade. Ultimately, the purpose is to alleviate the suffering that goes with getting decrepit and diseased and frail and dependent. And of course, not just the suffering of those who are suffering that, but also the suffering of their loved ones. The extension of average lifespan is essentially a side benefit. It's something that will happen because the way that we're going to do this, using regenerative medicine, will also mean that you have only the same probability as you did when you were a young adult of dying peacefully in your sleep, without any of these diseases. In other words, a very low probability indeed. So you will indeed, on average, live a great deal longer. And I don't think you'll complain if you do. But that is not the purpose. The purpose is to alleviate suffering. The question of how we would actually cope with the number of people on the planet comes up a great deal in these discussions, and so it should, because it's a very important question. But what we must ask ourselves is, is it a question that we are supposed to decide on the right answer to? Ultimately, there are three options for humanity. They're written on the left here. And I claim, strongly, that it is up to those of in the future who have these therapies at their disposal to make the choice between these therapies. At the moment, we have the high death rate because we haven't fixed the thing that kills most people. And therefore, we don't have this choice. The idea of hesitating on this basis to develop these therapies ultimately amounts to the idea of denying humanity of the future the most fundamental choice of all, the choice whether to live or to die. And we do not have a right to do that. The future has a right to decide that question for itself. Ultimately, the reasons for this extraordinary flight from reason, the, the sort of reason that all of us normally engage in, is psychological. There are three big reasons why people just won't be rational about this question. And those reasons all have something going for them, so I want to enumerate them in some detail. The first thing is fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown is actually a pretty reasonable emotion, because ultimately, you know, it's okay to be more scared of the downsides of an unknown situation than to be looking towards the upsides, up to a point. But, as I said, it's a question of sense of proportion. 
Here's a big quote that you don't have to read from um, William Herbert, a famous um, bioethicist and Stanford professor and um, member of the President's Council for Bioethics. And he says, well, the reason why he's not in for, up, up, up for all of this work is because he's not convinced that it would be a good thing. It might not play out to, be, to produce greater happiness. And that's good enough for him. Well, I say it's not good enough for me. The probability that it might be bad is ultimately the precautionary principle gone mad. The other thing that's important to, important to emphasize is that we're standing here today explaining to you that regenerative medicine is within striking distance of doing serious damage to aging. But a few years ago, it was not in striking distance. And it was perfectly reasonable to regard aging as something that would not be materially tackled in the foreseeable future. That changes everything. Because ultimately, when you're faced with a fate that's going to befall you probably some quite long time in the future, and it's going to be really horrible, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, then it's perfectly rational to put it out of your mind, because otherwise you're just going to spend your miserably short life being preoccupied by it. <laughs> and, and having determined that it's reasonable to put it out of your mind, it doesn't matter how you do that. It doesn't matter how irrational your rationalizations actually are. But of course that all changes when the inevitability of this fate becomes unclear. As soon as that happens, the um, irrationality, the rational irrationality, becomes part of the problem, a very big part. Finally, and most importantly, I want to mention what I think is the biggest psychological reason why there is so much ambivalence about doing anything about aging. And this is something which applies to a certain extent, even in the work that Bruce Ames spoke about with regard to things we can do already in terms of diet, where it applies much more strongly to things that we can't do yet, and indeed whose time frame for emergence is uncertain. A Nobody can really imagine the size of galaxies. You know, it's just too big for our imagination. We can't actually, you know, visualize the, 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 the width of the galaxy. And we all understand that we can't do that, and we sort of, you know, we don't behave irrationally as a result. What I want to put, it, put to you is that people who have difficulty taking the defeat of aging seriously as a desirable goal are in the same, in a corresponding sort of position. It's not their imagination that's problematic, it's simply their emotions. Their emotional capacity is not big enough to hold on to the enormity, the immense enormity of the tragedy of aging. So they just put it out of their minds because it allows them to have a certain amount of peace in their lives. I'm proud to say that I'm not one of those people. I take aging seriously and I want to fix it. And I thought I would end with a, um, a quote, for those of you who may still be unsure about this, from uh, an icon of contemporary moral philosophy, who said, in, um, the, um, in connection with the, case, uh, with the tragic case of Terry Schiavo, the long-time um, persistent vegetable state, um, said that it is always wise to err uh, on the side of life when in doubt. That is true now in the case of aging, just as it was with Schiavo. And I'll stop there.